Hymn to the Dragon tells the story of a young nun in 1920. She smuggles a gun to uh, an unknown party uh, set during the, the, the Irish Civil War, then follows her crisis of conscience about having, having done that. I was very grateful to uh, Lauren for her efforts on this because she found some uh, amazing statues and iconography to work into the piece and that just, that just elevates the whole thing. One of the things that I really wanted to make sure were seen was the very prominent Catholic iconography such as the, the votive and what that is is it's a, a unit that's an array of candles and these are lit for past family members and it really just set the tone and you, immediately know that you're in a Catholic church and not an Anglican. Um, she lit all the candles on and we turned around and just had this beautiful glow and this beautiful uh, presence in this kind of small space. So, uh, and that was a real treat for me and Patrick because we could suddenly um, devise a lot more um, cinematically around that piece to just really lift it. So when we were designing the shots for this piece, myself and Tommy, we didn't want to overshoot um, and we wanted to the shots to have a certain weight that was done to reinforce the, the, the weight of both like what the character is doing in the video and the weight of the church at that time which would have been significant especially if you were a nun and had taken a lot of vows uh, to the church in 1920 you know that's a very different moral problem than it would be in 2020. There was a hint of intimidation there but like the crew made it such a comfortable work environment that I didn't really feel a lot of pressure. It was just a really good experience being by myself with the camera right there. And I was like, before in my previous work, like working off people is like, it really helps and stuff, but it, I think it was a lot more um, insightful to have to do it myself. So a lot of what Roisin was doing was very, um, very small, very subtle, very succinct um, and very beautiful. Um, and when an actor is doing something like that uh, and being quite minimal about it, you have to be very careful that you capture it correctly. So, and a lot of the time I ended up like right in on her face uh, with the camera like only a few inches away from her. When an actor is giving you that much and they're, they're just that watchable and that, um, and especially with the music working behind it as well, that, that close up becomes much more than just a close up of a face. It's, it's more emblematic of the, of the whole theme of the video. So I actually really enjoy uh, prop making myself as well as um, you know designing the world of the um, script. When I read it in the treatment that there was a gun that needed to be put into a Bible, I definitely didn't expect it to be as tough as it was. It was, what I did was I put the gun on the top layer of the page, out, outlined it with a pen and then just started cutting and it took about four hours, four to five hours of cutting this book again and again and again, just the outline, just to get it deep enough to fit the gun in and for the book to close properly. I was worried because like, it's such a difference between stage. Like I was worried that I was just there doing absolutely nothing. But the fun part about a music video is that the music makes you feel. <laughs> so that wasn't an issue. And um, Patrick, the director made, like he made it very clear of what he wanted from me and that made it extremely easy. It didn't really feel like I was working but that was also one of the most enjoyable experiences acting that I have done. It was great working with Roisin on this because she, she has to carry a lot of the film on her shoulders. She's basically the only the only person in it so she has to carry the whole story. But what I said to her at the, at the time was that you, you the, the song is going to be doing a lot of heavy lifting for you so that you know you don't have to emote every moment with the with the idea of the narrative there's a subtlety to it that really lends itself to the lightness of the song and allows the song to do the emotional heavy lifting i never think you you have to an actor has to keep the whole thing balanced in their head whatever they're doing you know less is more um it's not even a case of less being more because that implies more is good it's less is better less is less <laughs> So one of the biggest challenges on this shoot was trying to light it in a way that would be realistic to the actual time period that we were in. It was set in the 1920s in a very old church, so naturally this thing would not have electricity or sort of any of those sort of, you know, standard light sources that you would maybe like to work with. I think that was probably my most challenging aspect of this, was using just candlelight, like actual candlelight, and only accenting it very, very slightly with um, tungsten sources to uh, light the whole piece. So it was 
very much, uh, you could almost say underlit, but stylistically underlit, I would, I would prefer to say. It was quite nice visually to see pops of light with the candles and um, the light shining through the stained glass window. I think we really created a space that, you know, allowed this moment in time to feel the way it should have felt.